Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has extended the continuous voter registration CVR exercise to August 31st, 2018. Now, this decision, according to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is to enable more eligible registrants maximize the opportunity, which was to end by the 17th of this month. While INEC says it has so far registered over 12 million voters since the commencement of the exercise in April 2017, the registration will continue in all the designated registration centers every day, including weekends, however, excluding public holidays between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. This development is observed by many to be a step in the right direction and, above all, a good one towards improving the electoral process in the country. So, how can this opportunity be further maximized by the people? This is the outlook of Nigeria today. Welcome, I am Joy Usiago. I have with me in the studio to discuss this issue, Comrade Okwoku Ogin. He is the Director of Media and Publicity, Good Governance Ambassadors of Nigeria, Gogan. Thank you very much Thank for you. joining us. Thank you. Let's also welcome Aliu Bello. Aliu Bello is the Deputy Director in Charge of Publicity at the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Joy, for having me. Gentlemen, welcome to our program. And the current decision taken by INEC for the extension um, is heartwarming. Let's start with you, sir, uh, Aliu. What are some of the issues you noticed that led to this extension? You see, actually one of the good things that happened is having an INEC that has a good listening ears. Um, I said so because this registration of water especially the continuous water registration exercise. You remember, Joy, it commenced since April 2017. Right. On the 27th of April, to be precise. The exercise is sustained for the past 16 months. And actually by some technical and collaborative decisions of stakeholders, the Commission consider it reasonable to suspend the exercise on um, um, on the 17th of April, on the 17th of um, August. But Nigerians all over the country keep calling on the Commission to extend so as to enable more Nigerians to get registered. And because of that, the Commission now approved the extension of the exercise to end by, to end by 31st of August this month. This extension of two weeks is actually informed by the public outcry on INEC to extend it. And I think that one, for that one, the Commission deserves kudos. I agree with you. Now let's uh, <laughs> go to Comrade of Boko. Yeah. Comrade of Boko, I'm sure you've been observing, you've been going around. Um, considering when the registration process started in 2017 till now, what has been your observations? Yes, the hallmark of every democracy is on its electoral process, which begins with uh, the voter's registration, then to casting of vote. And uh, I will agree with uh, the INEC uh, director that the voter's registration is not only required to be extended within the next two weeks, but it should continue to at least two, three months to the general election. This is based on the fact that the registration centers are limited. In a, a country of about 60 million voters, you have less than 1,000 registration centers. And these registration centers are located at various local government headquarters. So some of these villagers find it very difficult to assess the local government headquarters. No, they are rural farmers. Most of them go to their farms in the morning and come back in the evening. So most times they find it difficult to assess it. In some areas, like uh, in Benue, for example, People, the people decided to rotate between communities. This week is this community, next week it will be that community. So if you happen to travel out of your community or engage in other businesses that are not able to register, 
it therefore means you are automatically being disenfranchised. So I next should do more by not just extending the two weeks, but to make it a continuous process, even after election. All right, um, Aliu, Comrade Okpoko has made some very vi uh, vital observations, and I I'm sure that is based on field work. Perhaps they've been going around. Let's talk about the number of registration centers you have. In your opinion, do you have enough? Do you think they're limited? Um, uh, good enough. I think, uh, let me respond to one of the things that he raised. I want to, Comrade, to appreciate the fact that before the commencement of CVR Nationwide, we used to have this exercise only for two weeks before every general election. So we used to have it only for two weeks. So you can imagine, if within two weeks having an insurance, you, could, you, can, you can even register. But this commission, current commission, interpret and understands the law, the continuous water registration as envisaged, as provided for in the law, and they now use the wisdom available to commission to now open up registration centers almost on continuous basis, day in, day out, almost, since April. Now, this is how it, it started. We started this exercise at local government INEC area offices. But because of complaints of in, in, inadequate number of centers, the commission now increased the numbers. We had 774 at the beginning. We now operate over 1,400 um, centers nationwide. This was to enable more Nigerians registered. Apart from that, at the commencement of this exercise, it only happens during week, uh, during working days, later Saturdays and Sundays, were now included to be part of the days for the show for the exercise. So you can imagine, on about two to three occasions, the commission was responding to public demand. The exercise was, for the, uh, was, conduct, was being uh, conducted in uh, local government area offices. Now it goes beyond the local government area offices. Initially, it was but only from centers, 9 to 3 p.m. Would you say those centers you have, in your opinion, well, are they enough for the number of, well, there of, must of be eligible voters? There might not be enough centers, but at least the increase in number of centers was a good response to public outcry that the centers were inadequate. Given the resources available, Nigerians will appreciate the fact that INEC had used available resources maximally to even sustain the exercise at that level. Okay, we appreciate the level you have gone so far. Let's bring back Comrade Okpoko. You know, I, I want to hear more from you because it's obvious that you've done a bit of field work. Yes. Now, let's look at the electorate themselves. Do you think that they make deliberate effort to even go uh, for this registration exercise, knowing how we always wait to the end of every event before we go ahead to do the registration. Don't you think what we're experiencing now is because there's a rush? Yes, because no, 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 it's, it's not close because to the closing. Date. No, it's not. There is no rush. And uh, I will tell, give you an example from uh, Utaku uh, Market. That I, my team we went there for sensitization, especially the traders, and uh, the report we got from them was some of them closed their shops for three days. You go to a registration center. First, you pick number. You spend the whole day, it's not your turn. You come back tomorrow. Maybe when it's getting very close to you, you discover that the machine is already 40 or it's closing time because they close by 5. So before you know it, I spent three days. Lock your shop, no business, PVC is not collected. So most people are being discouraged. So you, and it, it would take an ample time to convince yourself to also go back to re-participate in the exercise. So these are some of the challenges. So, and uh, we also agree that INEC haven't done its best by increasing the numbers of registration centers. And with the figure given so far, 1,400 registration centers in a population of over about 16 million voters is still inadequate. And uh, two, some of the challenges are also this uh, untrained staff. Some of the staffs are uh, uh, ad, ad hoc staffs. And they are highly, hardly being trained. And uh, even INEC itself is understaffed. 
Okay, we, 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 let's give um, Aliu the opportunity to respond. Well, before you respond, I um, want to add a bit to what he said earlier because I have people from my own where I live who went out last week um, to get their PVC. I must tell you that the electorate is aware they want to exercise their rights in 2019. So even people who are 19, 18 are going out now without being forced to go out. And they went out in the morning as early as 5 a.m., they came back at 6. They didn't come back with the PVCs. They were asked to come the next day. So let's, let's accept it. There are challenges, but we agree that you've made some remarkable progress. Do you know about these challenges? Are you aware of them I, and are you well, addressing them? Let me thank you, say thank you, Joy, but let me correct an impression. In fact, we should be able to inform Nigerians that this exercise is only for persons who have not registered before. So I don't want to believe or I don't want to imagine that the over 70 million Nigerians that have registered before the 2011 elections are still there waiting to be registered again. And this is a fresh exercise for those persons who were not 18 years as at last registration and who have not registered for any reason. Agreed. So if those that are yet to register are still queuing up to get registered, I think they should have used the opportunity offered to them since April to date. Anyway, let me imagine that, um, yes, we need to do more than we have been, we have been doing, mm -hmm. which I believe, at least, having to sustain the exercise for the past 16 months mm -hmm. is good enough to appreciate the fact that INEC is responding to the needs of electorates who have not registered. But I also want to, um, uh, my sure colleague they, here, they, I'm, I'm sure coming to join. He said um, something, something about training and ad hoc stuff. At least let us correct this impression. This exercise is being managed, sustained, and run by INEC staff. No ad hoc staff is okay. recruited for this purpose. So the commission is not spending CC on any person in the name of payment of ad hoc staff. Okay. So it is our own staff, and uh, uh, I believe to the level best they have been trained and have been yielding on the bit. Except for perhaps, yes, I will agree that it, as the exercise is winding up, Munajerans will now, that, that last minute rush, you know how we behave so can most we time. say that that is it's responsible for rush. some of the challenges That's you've the been having? Thing. Last minute rush. Okay. Apart from last minute rush, I think we have been able to run this exercise for the past 16 months. And the, the, uh, the, I mean, the turnout is not as high as we are witnessing currently. You are right, yes, Nigerians are now re more, re you know, responding. To, to register, and uh, we thank you. We thank you. Uh, we thank agencies like uh, Gogan for mobilizing Nigerians to, to to actually get registered. The commission is doing a lot in that respect. And I hope well. you partner with him well, so you get to hear from them. We do, we do, and um, he knows that we are always on ground all the time, mobilizing Nigerians to come out and get registered. All right, before we go on a short break, let me ask you about this 12 million registrants yeah. that you you are led to in some of the views we found out about from people and then what we found out online. Do they all have the PVCs? Yes, you don't expect them to register and obtain PVCs at the moment. What happens is when you register, you will be given TBC, temporary voter card. Mm -hmm. The permanent voter card will be produced for them and will be issued to them before elections. So it's not as you register, then you go home with it. PBC, permanent voter card, is not uh, you collect it as you register. It has to be duly processed. I remember we ran AFIS, I mean automatic fingerprint identification system, to ensure that multiple registrants are eliminated from the system, to ensure that only joining Nigerians that have registered were issued with PBCs. Unfortunately, the challenge we keep having now is also about collection of PBCs. Yes, I was People don't even come out to... Co okay, I mean, fine. How are you dealing with that issue? Because we know we've heard from uh, INEC in several reports, both uh, in traditional and then social media, that many people are yet to collect their PBCs. How are you dealing this with that? The sensitization is on. Those that have registered should please patronize the registration centers and collect their PBCs. These 
PVCs that have been produced for them is the only document that will be needed during elections. Unless you, ha you come with your PVCs on election day, you will, not be able, you will not be allowed to register. So Nigerians should take it seriously that PVC remains the only document, the only instrument that could actually allow you to have access to voting on election day. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you, Julie. Uh -huh. Let's take a short break now and go out of the studio where we join our correspondent who was out earlier in the day to ask Nigerians what they think. Let's hear the views of extension on continuous voters registration exercise from the street. For us that have not collected to, to get our own done and collect our, our PVCs, yeah, it's a good one. It was very easy. Actually, I registered before now in Amak and then two months ago, I had to go to where they directed me to go and pick it up. I just went there and they asked for the temporary one and then I gave it to them and they gave me my permanent on. It's a good idea. I think the extension is very okay. Yes, I've collected it, but though the problem is that even though the time they even extend it to now, I don't really think it will even favor some people because the time is too short. No, I haven't. Right. It's difficult. I mean, the process is just so tedious. I've been there for like three times already. And on those occasions, I was there, um, say, 4 a.m., as early as 4 a.m., I and my friend. And the officials came very late. They came around 11, and we had to queue. And while they were, they were in the process, they had to attend to those who were there three days ago. I really need my PVC, so I will try again, and I will continue to try. Actually, I go there this morning, around 6 a.m. I'm there this morning, but they say that they already collect all the numbers for today. You understand? So... I would like to go there tomorrow again, so if I can get it, good by me. Thanks for staying with us. I still have my guest in the house. And let's go quickly to Ali. You listen to uh, the response there, and you can see uh, the caliber of people we spoke to, young people. You see how passionate they are. They're willing to get these PVCs and exercise their franchise. You had the challenges they complained about, which are similar to what Comrade Opoku talked about. What do you have to say? I actually appreciate the enthusiasm to get registered by youth and young people, but unfortunately for them, for the few that said the process is, was tedious and the rest of them, I think they slept. They were like trying to sleep over the rights. They have had the opportunity. They will continue to have it after 2019 elections. Meanwhile, I'm only to encourage them to continue to patronize these registration centers to ensure they get registered so long as they wish to vote in 2019. And one good comment that I took for, uh, as a takeaway from the, from the interview is one of the, the, the that actually said she registered only for her to come a few days later and collect her PVC. And the process is as easy and simple as that. So it's just and one in a million. She registered one. But at least out of the four you interviewed, she is one of them. So I can imagine that that one is a good one. And another, one, another person also said the same thing. So I'm not trying to sound very defensive or if there are errors, but I believe that the opportunity is thrown out to Nigerians to patronize the polling in, uh, send, um, registration centers and get registered. Most importantly, this process is free, open, and transparent, and it charges no CC. It's free, open, and transparent. So no matter the process, no matter how tedious or difficult it could be, but yet it's an opportunity offered to Nigerians. This is the only first time we're having it this way. That's right. Well, I just hope that you also sensitize. I know your staff are trained, but there's a need to also keep talking to them in terms of being receptive, in terms of going um, to location early enough. You know, since Nigerians are enthusiastic about it, there's a need for us to also have INEC play their own part extensively so that we can make this process as seamless. Well, let's bring in uh, Comrade Okboko. I want us to look at the issue of transfer and registered voters, those who have misplaced their cards. Um, from your work on the field, did you hear of such, like those who could say, oh, I don't know where my card is, yes. I don't know what to do? Let's hear from you. Yes, yes, there are a lot. I have a lot. Uh, before I, we go into that, I want to quickly 
uh, put but you to in you one area. Really uh, very brief, very brief. Yeah, like uh, we'll talk about uh, people auto that registered before this time. We're talking about people who just made or became 18 in recent time. I want to also remind you that the system, the Nigerian political system was so corrupt that most reasonable Nigerians gave up on the electoral process. In a situation whereby your vote does not count, so you are also being discouraged for participating in the process. So people are coming out a mass, not because it's a, la a last rush, it's because of President Muhammad Buhari. People have really seen that, that corruption has been efficiently dealt with, and their vote cannot count. So they are coming to participate in the process. So going back to the issue of a uh, voters transfer, uh, yes, a PVC transfer. Now, the PVC transfer has not been effective, except for highly placed persons, maybe like governors, ministers, who may wish to transfer their PVC. Because I have, we have a couple of persons who register here in FCT and wish to transfer to their own state. So they will follow it up for like two, three months. It's very tedious. They could not do it. Okay, let's and, let, uh, uh, because of time, let's yes. allow um, yeah. Aliu to speak to that. You I know, so for appreciate those... the fact that um, you are now touching on the next component of the exercise. Actually, yes. the seizure is not about registering fresh uh, persons. It's not about registering those who turn 18 or those that have not registered before. It's also about extending opportunity to Nigerians that who wish to transfer their registration from one place to another. And this place, uh, this transfer of registration is non-discriminatory. It's not reflecting on status. It's actually based on um, a request. As at last week, the commission have dealt with over eight, uh, with over six hundred thousand cases of transfer. So, for instance, so what I'm if saying I is, in Abuja would like to vote in Delta State. Now, it is possible to do the transfer. Yeah, let me just explain briefly how the transfer works. If you live in Abuja, mm -hmm. is, let's say first of all, let me take it from the fact that. You are registered. You have registered in Abuja here. If you wish to to vote in Abuja, you have no case to transfer. But if you are transferred out of Abuja to any other place and you wish to vote in your new place, you go to that new your new place and file up application, and they will process it for you. When it is uh, when it is completed, they issue you with PBC that will have all your details transferred from your former place to your current place, and you could vote in your current place on election day. Is that process going to be easy? It doesn't, uh, it, it is not, uh, it is wrong and conducted by our own officials. The, the role of the voter here or the registrant is to seek for transfer. The moment you apply for transfer, you have already completed your own role. You allow the commission to process it for you. Once it is completed, they will call you by your own phone number. If you did not even check on time, they can call you. But I'm not saying they must call you. Okay. I'm saying they have an opportunity to extend an invitation to that. Please, those that have applied for this, for transfer, they could come this time around and check. Okay. But you are you have the, the honors of checking rest entirely on the applicant. If you apply to get uh, to to transfer your details, you could check as well. And Whenever well, it is completed, then you take it off. All right, there's this Thank important you. one I would like you to address uh, before we, yeah. we go. It's, you know, we know that you have arrangement in place to cater for internally displaced persons. Um, how do you intend to deal with that, especially knowing that you've moved from the original location to a new location and this issue of PVC will also continue? How do you intend to do you that? You see, actually the concept of um, uh, these internally displaced persons is... Uh, actually uh, a, a very uh, a strong source of concern, not only to INEC but to Nigerians. And the way Commission is responding to it is this way. You know the registration is not tied to specific polling units. It is dependent upon the person wishing to register to indicate which polling unit he wish to register. But the law says you can only vote in the place where you registered, meaning at the point of registration you will supply information about your intended place to vote during 2019 elections or any other elections. So, what, so how will so this play if, out? If you go to IDP camp, so it is not a polling unit, mm -hmm. but the units that are available within the vicinity, within the area, are listed out in the PDF. So the persons living in IDP will select from the units. 
Oh. So you select your own, and you, you get registered, and the details of your registration will reflect in the, in the unit of your choice, and that settles it. Oh, that's It's as easy and simple as that. Okay, um, let's look at uh, political parties. You have been on the field for a while, Comrade of Boku. Do you see these political uh, parties sensitizing people? Let's even talk of the grassroots on the need to turn out and vote. Or is it just about their parties? No, yeah, the uh, political parties, including uh, even the least party you may expect in Nigeria, has been involved in sensitizing its members on the issue of uh, PVC. So today, like the 2019 election, so many people say it's not going to be based on a uh, political party. It's going to be based on individuals. So people who intend to aspire, even go off their political way, to mobilize their own supporters to participate in the registration exercise. And uh, I also want to give uh, kudos to INEC, because uh, this present INEC has done better off than the previous ones. And that is why... Uh, Ali was speaking from the angle of the former INEC, and I'm trying to bring him to the new INEC. Oh, yeah. So this new INEC is where we we'll have a continuous voters registration, not just the two weeks That's as where we are. in the case of All right, know. gentlemen, <laughs> time is against us. I want to thank Comrade Okpoko, Gene, Director of Media and Publicity, Good Governance Ambassadors of Nigeria. Gogan for joining us this evening. Thank you very much. I'd also like to thank Ali Billy, the Deputy Director in Charge of Publicity at the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Joy. It's been an insightful thank discussion, and I totally enjoyed it. And I do hope that you took away one or two things from our discussions this evening. And that wraps up the chat on Nigeria today. I want to thank you for staying with us. Join us again tomorrow for another brilliant edition. Till then, I am Joel Isabel.